video segment, we're going to talk about the different properties that uh, deal with intermolecular forces and how they actually can kind of control those. So we're going to start off with melting and boiling point. Um, in some hours, we were able to actually kind of cover this, but we'll hit it anyway real quick here uh, for everybody. So when a substance melts or boils, you think about it, it's actually breaking those intermolecular forces that holds molecules together, okay? Um, the reality is, if it wasn't for intermolecular forces, there would be no such things as liquids or solids in our universe, okay? Um, because it's the intermolecular forces that actually allow things to condense into liquids and then freeze into solids. Um, they are what hold everything together. So without IMF, there would be no liquids, there would be no solids. So it's kind of an important thing in our world. Um, so we're going to focus here on how does a boiling point affect the intermolecular force uh, effect by intermolecular force strength, okay? Um, so if we take a look, in this graph, we see we have butane, propanol, and propanol, um, and they have different types of intermolecular forces. So we have London dispersion, dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bonding here, okay? The masses are relatively the same, so that should not affect our results here too much. Uh, and then we see our boiling points. So as you look at this, you can probably conclude pretty quickly that as the intermolecular force gets stronger, the boiling point goes up. And that should make sense, right? Because intermolecular forces holds things together. And if you're going to boil something, that's actually trying to break things apart or separate. So it's got to be harder to separate the stronger those forces, OK, as we take a look at this. Now, the second piece of this puzzle is what happens when the intermolecular force type is actually the same, OK? So if we look, we have London dispersion forces on this graphic for all of these, OK? Methane, ethane, propane, and butane. However, these are definitely not the same size, okay? We end up having a mass of 16 all the way up to 58. So they get incrementally bigger as we add more carbons and hydrogens to these molecules, okay? The force type is still the same because these are all nonpolar, but we see a drastic change and a pretty linear regression of those boiling points again. So again, we take a look at this and say, okay, what's going on? Well, obviously, um, if the, the intermolecular force type is the same, but the mass is changing, Okay, we end up getting a higher boiling point the heavier the molecule. Now, the reason why that happens is because bigger molecules can generate stronger intermolecular forces. So London dispersion forces aren't all the same, which means there are different strengths of London dispersion forces within that category. Okay, The smaller you are, the smaller the atom is or the molecule is, the weaker the London dispersion forces they can generate. So butane, even though it's still considered a London dispersion force, can actually generate a strong enough force to hold its uh, boiling point to about zero degrees Celsius, okay? Um, however, you know, propane only to negative 42 and so forth, all right? So the kind of take home here is the more massive you are or the bigger you are, uh, the stronger the intermolecular forces are between things, okay? Which means that you really should have the bigger your atom, or sorry, the bigger your molecule is, it should have higher boiling points than smaller things in terms of that. Now, if we take a look at this graph, what we see here is boiling point on our y-axis, and we see on the x-axis, it says the period, okay? So basically what we're doing is, is we are attaching hydrogens to things in these different uh, periods, okay? So period two, if we look at the period two across our periodic table, that has carbon, nitrogen, fluorine, and oxygen in it, okay? Period three across our periodic table has silicone, phosphorus, chlorine, and sulfur, and so forth, okay? So as you look, this is kind of a way to measure mass. So period three elements will be bigger, period four will be bigger, and period five will be bigger. So we see a really good trend, right? So you see the biggest or the heaviest and the biggest molecules in that period tend to be the highest boiling points. You know, the blue-purple line especially, we see the lightest going up to the heaviest in terms of the boiling point. However, we see one major difference here in our process. If we take a look, this goes back to these hydrogen bonds again. So you have the lightest of all the molecules in those periods, but because they can hydrogen bond, because you have those extremely strong intermolecular forces, we see a massive spike in our, um, in our boiling points, okay? If you think about it, if it wasn't for hydrogen bonding, if this didn't exist in our scenario, water would have a boiling point somewhere between probably negative 50 and negative 100 degrees Celsius. So if it wasn't for hydrogen bonding, water would be a gas below room temperature, okay? 
Can you imagine our world being different? I mean, if you think about it, like water is a vapor in our entire planet. We would definitely not be living on this planet, I can tell you that, okay? Um, and we wouldn't live the way we are either because we would basically be gases, okay? So that along with ammonia and, and hydrogen fluoride, again, are, you know, massive differences there with those hydrogen bonds. Okay, so that's kind of boiling point. Um, we focused on boiling point, but all the same principles would apply to melting point here also.